Hi, and welcome to Let's Learn to Sew. In today's video, I'm going to explain how to read a sewing pattern. We're gonna start on the front of the envelope, flip it over, do the back. This video is part of our series. It's a sew along where we're gonna be sewing a pair of shorts. So once you've selected your pattern, you'll go over to the pattern drawer and you'll get it out. The first thing you wanna do is check for the size. Make sure that the one you're pulling from the drawer is the correct size. The information that the front of the pattern includes is the pattern number, the sizes. You'll see the company that makes it and then there'll be several pictures on it and the number of pictures will depend on how many different, they're called views, the pattern includes. So this one has several different variations of a shirt, two different variations of pants, and then the shorts. The shorts are view F and that's what we're gonna be sewing. Flip it over. There's a little bit of information on the flap. It's usually just the company information. Pull that back out of the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so you guys can get a better look. So we flipped it over. We're on the back side of the pattern now. We see that we're using pattern 1502. You can create five different pieces. We're looking for view F. So whenever we look at how much fabric we need, what measurements to take, and what the finished measurements are gonna be, we're always corresponding that to the letter F. So we come up here and we see that this um, designer suggests for the fabrics, flannel, gingham, laundered cottons, batiks, calico, and it goes on. I would suggest that you stick to like a gingham or a cotton or a calico. They're just easier fabrics to work with if you're new to sewing. Below our fabrics, we have our notions and the only notion that is listed for everything, so that includes F, is thread. Down below notions, you'll usually find your body measurements. The ones that we're interested for the shorts is going to be the hips, and that's measured nine inches below the waist, and we also want our waist measurement. If you're not sure how to take your measurements, I do have a video that I'll link down in the description and a blog post that walks you through doing that. So you're going to find your measurement here, and you're gonna find your measurement at the hip measurement. Whichever one is largest, that's the measurement you're gonna go with. So if my waist measurement falls here under small, but my hip falls in the medium, I'm gonna go with the medium size. Pattern size, you'll see that when you come down from your measurements, that's where you're gonna get what size you need. Commercial sewing patterns rarely match up with the size that you wear in ready wear or store-bought clothing. So now that I've got my measurement, we're just gonna say that I'm going with a medium. I'm gonna take this column, I'm gonna go all the way down to the shorts, and this is the amount of fabric I'm gonna need. So F is the shorts, they're worn one inch below the waist. If my fabric is 45 inches wide, then I'm gonna use one and one eighths of a yard of fabric. If my fabric, however, is 60 inches wide, then I'm gonna use 7 eighths of a yard of fabric. Next is elastic. Elastic shows one and a quarter yards of half inch wide elastic. I suggest going with a no roll elastic. You're not going to need this exact measurement. We're gonna decide how much elastic to use based on our hip measurement. The next measurement that we have is the finished garment measurement and this includes design and wearing ease. That means this is the measurement with some extra fabric or seam allowance added in. So like say in your shorts, when you sit down, you're not gonna split the seams. So F, our finished hip measurement is here. This um, does not have any other measurements for view F, just the hip measurement. But if we were doing the, the pants, you can see that it's got the side leg length and the leg width. And then little very bottom section, they usually fill that section in now with their social media information, email, and then phone number if you needed customer support. Now that we've covered the front and the back of the envelope, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video here. 
In the next video, I'll pick up with the instructions that are included in the inside of the sewing pattern. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and head over to the Facebook group and post them, or you can post them down in the comments section below the video.